On this episode, Regional Sales Manager Danny Windings joins us as we talk about yields in Southern Illinois, yields in Iowa, Steinkorn standability, and positive movement in commodity prices. Stick around for information about a yield monitor program where you can send Joe a picture of your yield monitor and receive a free gift. If you're listening to the podcast version, this episode features corn standability photos you can see in the video version on YouTube. Hi, this is Joe Mershman. Welcome to Cup of Joe. Episode number seven, season three. Today we have Ben and Turk and we have Danny Windings from Southern Illinois, our regional manager down there. He's going to give us a little update. Uh, you know, I think we'll just jump. Well, first of all, before we jump right into it, I just got to tell you how happy I am, how excited I am. I've never been this excited. Uh, and the reason why is, well, look at the markets. And Turk's going to give us an update on that. You know, $10 soybeans? My gosh. You know, we were thinking that was a dream a few weeks ago. And look at the weather. The weather looks, in this area, next 10 days, perfect weather for harvest. I mean, you know, the only thing that could be better is if the election was over. <laughs> Getting a little tired of that. <laughs> but anyhow, let's hope that turns out the right way, too. But anyhow, let's go ahead, Danny. You're, you're in southern Illinois. You're the regional manager. Give us a little update of, you know, what area you cover and, and then tell us what's going on down there because you guys are leading indicators. You know, you harvest a little bit before we do in the north. Yep. Yeah, Joe, it's been really good. It's, uh, I tell you what, the yields of these enlisted soybeans have been really right and some fat checks out here for the farmer with the pricing that you just discussed a while ago. Uh, we started out here a couple of weeks ago uh, down here on some early, early beans. Early beans were a little soft, a uh, little unusual for us, but uh, as we get into some of these later threes, have really the yields have really popped up. I mean, 80 bushels are not uncommon for a lot of different areas right now on these three, six Kennedys. Uh, the corn's been doing phenomenal down here for a lot of farmers, so it looks like the perfect year is setting up for these farmers with pricing and yields that are, are coming to the table. I know they deserve it down there because uh, it's not always that way, is it? No, it's not. No, it's not. And, uh, and uh, you know, we've got several different areas I cover. I cover southern Illinois, Tennessee, Indiana, Kentucky, uh, southeast Missouri, but uh, southeast Missouri's yields are coming in a little later. They got they got their crops in a little bit uh, later than what the Southern Illinois guys done. The Southern Illinois guys are just uh, putting up some huge numbers right now with uh, with what we're seeing with soybeans and corn. Uh, Kentucky guys are getting started now, um, so it's uh, it's uh, getting we're getting phone calls every day about how ecstatic farmers are right now for sure with the yields that are coming in on the on our soybeans for sure. So the Enlist E3 and LibriLink GT27, you feel very confident in whatever recommendation you make, it, it's going to be going to be something that a farmer is going to not be disappointed when it comes to yield. No, I, I, I really, I, you know, Joe, you've always cringed when we planted early beans down here. And I think early beans, you know, we planted some 2.8s and some 3.0s down here that really just didn't happen for us. But as we get into the, the later group threes, they're really starting to shot to shine and, and, and sign the check. Um, I, I'm really excited about what group fours are going to do for us down here. The longer season beans, I think we've caught a lot of good rains. And I, I, I tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm like you, I'm, I'm very excited to see what the future holds for us as, as these yields can continue to come out. Talk just a little bit, Danny, about how, what your growing season was like. And, and has this been a phenomenal growing season? Or what stresses have you seen this year to, to pull these beans into what, what you're looking at now? Well, I, I think we had a phenomenal growing season. We started off really good. We got a lot of stuff done early. And uh, and I think we're reaping the benefits of that. Um, we've, we've had some dry periods where we've not had a, a lot of rain. But for most of the season, for most of the areas, we've had some really good uh, weather. Uh, there might have been short periods of dry uh, and a little bit of stress areas, but I mean, up through August, we've had plenty of rain. I mean, we're probably getting into a dry area now, um, but it's working out great because farmers are, are harvesting and getting the crops out and everything's working out very, very well. That's the way it's supposed to be, right? That's the way it's supposed to be. It, it normally don't work that way, but it's, it's happening that way. Thanks, Danny, for that report, and I hope the good yields continue down there uh, for those farmers down there. They're, they're good folks. Ben, tell us what's going on on corn. We've uh, 
for a little bit of a yield report, I guess, we're just getting started uh, wrapping around this area on some earlier maturities, you know, some 106, 108 day corn varieties are running around that 22 to 24% moisture. Um, leading indicators say that this year is probably going to be like last year on for corn yields because we haven't really seen too many bean fields come out yet. Um, so, you know, we have one farm north of town where a, a customer had uh, our 9714, 106 day variety on really, really good dirt, probably some of the best dirt in the county that was running, you know, 260 to 280, you know, on, on some of his best tiled pieces where he got the stand that he wanted on that variety because, you know, on that 9714, we really want to stack that in tight. So 38 to 40,000 on flat and black, he was running in the, in the 280 is a very achievable number with that variety. So he was really excited, really happy with uh, how things were yielding. Um, and he had some dry weather too. You had a period yeah. of dry weather through there. Yeah, we only had two tenths of an inch of rain in, in the month of August. And he said if we would have had an inch to two inches in August, that we would have been over 300 bushel corn in that field. So... Yeah. Uh, well, that's just incredible. Well, you know, the Stein hybrids, you know, that's that's where the future is. I mean, shorter hybrids, higher populations, splitting that nitrogen, you, putting that sulfur on, and uh, using a fungicide. I mean, that's when the yields are going to have that 300 bushel potential. And and no question about it, he's one of the one of the best farmers in the area, and he's got some really really good soils. So put it all together. Good for him. Yep. When us three all had the opportunity to run up to Adele to look at some uh, some MS technology uh, elite trial plots, and while we were up there, Harry Stein had the opportunity to share us some pictures, and we got two, well, three pictures, one that I took about two weeks ago from the, the effects of after the deratio, and we have a split here with the decal number 6360 against the... 9653-32 and you can see because a farmer split his planter you could see every strip running down through that field where the standability of the decal wasn't near as good as what the what the stein corn was and ideally we don't really want to see this stripped out because the the stein corns you know 10 15 inches shorter than what the what the what the decal number is and we're probably going to see some yield penalty from that but from a standability standpoint the uh the the stein corn is going to yield much better now because that other corn is flat and goosenecked. It's going to be a pain in the butt to harvest, and more than likely it didn't have ideal conditions to finish out, so it's probably going to outrun. Undoubtedly some yield loss. Yep. Yeah, and, and that was in, near Cedar Rapids, which is the worst of the worst as far as wind. You know, those are winds, you know, maybe approaching 100 mile an hour. And uh, I, the shading effect is what you're talking about, that height advantage. In other words, that shading effect can go 30 feet is what – what the Stein data has proven. That, in other words, if you have a tall hybrid, it will affect the yield 30 feet uh, against a shorter hybrid. So in other words, if you're going to do a side-by-side -side comparison, you really need to move over 30-some feet to get a fair side-by-side -side comparison when you're comparing a hybrid that's 12 inches taller than, a, than another hybrid. So, And that's why test plots, uh, when you look at test plots, you know some of these companies know this, and they purposely put all the competitor short varieties against their tall varieties because they know they automatically will win based on sunlight interception. Right. So a little bit of little bit of games played there, now, and we know which companies do that. And uh, uh, it's not a good game to play if you're really trying to help the farmer. You know, you really want the best hybrid out there. And standability is such a big deal. You got another picture too, don't you? That yep. one is from Adel, isn't it? Yep, and this one is from Adele. We have a Pioneer 160 number 6220 versus Stein's 97. Uh, 14 that we were talking about earlier dash 20 and uh, it's just it's incredible you can see right to the row where you have plants that are leaned over well past a 45 degree angle um, harvesting the 97 14 is going to be easy harvesting the pioneer uh, 06 22 zero is going to be is going to be a nightmare so and then I have the third picture from Kingston Iowa where uh, we were looking at, we were flying some pictures to see what standability kind of looked like and, and some different things that were going on out in that field. And you can see a field of Pioneer. I don't remember the number, but it has a Pioneer post on the outside of it uh, that somebody was flagging. And you can see the, the down corn in the center yep. of that field compared to the, uh, the that was our Stein 9808 and then the other field. So we're definitely seeing some advantage this time of year. It's fun to go out and kind of look and see uh, – um, how things have fared the weather you know we're going to get really really close to you know joe talked about the next 10 days we're going to be harvesting and we're going to be able to really reap the rewards from from what the season has given us yeah and just one recap if, if 
customers are not planted Steinkorn. You have to understand, for the last 40 years, they've been breeding for yield and standability. Those are the two criteria that, that drove their selection process. And in the process, they came up with a hybrid that is hybrids that are much shorter, much stronger standing. And I've never seen a year where we don't have some type of wind. And particularly when you got everything on go, you got lots of moisture. When you get lots of moisture, you typically get a lot of wind. So it makes sense to me that, you know, you, 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 you do all these things to, to try to control the thousand variables. Don't forget standability. Don't right. forget standability. But the key thing with Stein hybrids is you've got to plant the population to get the same amount of biomass, the same number of leaves with these shorter plants. If you got a foot sh- shorter plant, you got to put more plants out there to get the equal number of biomass as these taller plants. So you're really not, even though you're pushing your population, it makes you nervous. That really, you're not because you're putting the same number of leaves out there, same amount of interceptions, and that's where the where the you generate the uh, conversion of sunlight into green. Right, and with the Stein numbers, you know, we we talk about how thick you can plant them, and some some varieties, you know, particular, you can talk about a number like eleven ninety seven. If you plant it at thirty eight thousand, you're gonna have barren ears, you're gonna have standability issues, yep. and all the things that we were talking about. You're not gonna get the barren ears, and every bushel, every thousand plants out in that acre is worth six bushels. So we call we talk about six bushel per thousand. So if we're not planting the population, if we're off by 20 bushel, if we got planted at 32,000 next to a, a variety that needs to be planted at 32,000. So like if we had a pioneer number versus a Stein number, you know, we're off by X, Y, Z because we're not planting, you know, we're off, you know, eight, 10, 12, 14 bushel because we're not planting that product 10, 15% thicker than what, what, what it needs to be planted. And the other thing too is very important on Stein hybrids to use sulfur. Sulfur yeah. is a very critical element. If you're not putting the sulfur on, again, that could be a limiting factor for your yield potential. Yep. So I think it's also important to, to note that even though we're planting these at higher populations, you're still going to be happy with the cost per acre of the seed too that's right very competitive price you know that's that's what kind of sets people down is they go oh i can buy it for that and so that's a plus two yep turk what do you got for us today well i think uh i think everybody's pretty happy and excited about the market and what's been happening uh, the usda report come out on september 11th and lowered the uh, uh corn number by um uh, 200, the ending stocks number by 250 uh, million uh, bushels, and so that's that's a pretty big number, and uh, raised the um, the average price up by 40 cents. So, kind of took everybody by surprise, and and we're all seeing the, that in the market. And then the soybeans, they dropped the uh, production by 112 million uh, bushels and raised the average price by 90 cents. So. Um, we're seeing that the opportunity to sell ten dollar corn is here. Or ten dollar beans. Or ten dollar beans is here, and uh, uh, take advantage of it. And even even for next year, if you keep an eye on next year, it wouldn't be wouldn't be out of line to book a few of those bushels for next year as we as we get over that ten dollar mark. The way I got it figured, there's only one person standing between higher prices and lower prices, and that's Danny Windings. Because if he sells enough Mershman corn and soybeans down in that area, you know, he could raise that volume up and the prices, like everything that you just told him will, is gonna go to go to hell. It's all gonna go backwards, right, Danny? That's exactly right. <laughs> so, so, so Danny, it's all about the, um, the uh, profitability per acre. And the only way to get more profit per acre is bigger yields. That's right. That's the fastest way to lower your cost per bushel. You know, whereas if you can spread your costs over more bushels, it's going to going to make that cost. And Danny, you just keep selling. Don't worry about the border trade. Okay. <laughs> okay. We'll just keep going. Okay. Uh, I wanted to uh, end up. Uh, you know, since we're talking about yields, and you know, I, we decided that um, you know Turk was uh, woke up at, uh, with this idea, and I thought it was a great idea, <laughs> and. And we're going to show you a yield monitor picture right now. If you, as a Mershman user of Mershman products, if you would send us a picture of your yield monitor, and on that it has the current yield, plus it has the average uh, of, of that so far, which we hope is at least 10 acres, and you, and you have the variety name on that screen, you just text me that picture with your name and address, and I'll send you... A hitch pin, and these are these are uh, really nice hitch pins. And it and also when you hear that click, 
That's to remind you to lock your order in before harvest this year, okay? <laughs> I like that. So don't forget to do that. But uh, we will send you a hitch pin. And again, Alex is going to put in what we're asking for, and the uh, he'll give you uh, a, a, a text number that you can send it to. And just take the picture, text it to us, put your name, address. And we won't use your name on on uh, on, on, on posting these yields. We'll just use the town. So Because I, I know farmers like to keep some of that stuff co- confidential. But... Here's an opportunity to get a really nice hitch pin just by sending us your your yield off your yield monitor uh, on Mershman Seeds Products and Steincorn. So that brings us to the highlight of the program, Danny. I know you've been waiting for this, and, and that's our, our, our corny jokes. Now, those of you that haven't been watching uh, Cup of Joe know that the corny joke was actually invented by a seed company. And it was back around the turn of the century. Their their seed brochure was so boring with all their garden seeds and whatnot in it. They decided that they would put some corny jokes in it to get people to turn the page. So uh, that's what we do here too. The same thing. Uh, we give some good information, and we hope they stay to the end uh, to, and watch it. But anyhow, here here is the uh, the jokes I have. And I know I know you're going to need a lift this week because you're going to be working hard. So um, I actually have three. We have a bonus one this week. <laughs> Uh, why did it get so hot in the baseball stadium after the game? All the fans left. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. Now that COVID nineteen, there's no fans, so it must be hot. Every game they're playing right now must be extremely hot. Now here's another one because uh, I want to keep the best one to the end. W- what is an astronaut's favorite part on a computer? What is an astronaut's favorite part on a computer? The space bar. And this one here is my favorite. Okay, what is Forrest Gump's password? You know, everybody's got a password, phone, computer, whatnot. What is Forrest Gump's password? One, Forrest, one. (laughs) (laughs) Well, thanks for listening today. Please be safe out there as you're harvesting. We hope your yields meet your expectations. In fact, we hope they exceed your expectations. Encourage you to place your order for Mershman soybeans before harvest and stein corn. Take advantage of it. There's no reason uh, to wait. Uh, we've got good discounts right now, and uh, we have excellent supplies. So uh, we appreciate your business. We'll see you next week. Yeah.